Good morning once again. Thanks for listening. Here I am with Lewis Simonkiewicz. Lewis is our facilities manager at the Hanover Theater, and he has been here for a few months, but we have kept him more than busy, and he's going to be talking to us about some of our green initiatives and our sustainable energy. Welcome, Lewis. Uh, thank you, Lisa. It's nice to be here. Well, we love having you, and I really wanted you to come on the program and talk to people about some of the really easy things that they could do as well as we could that I've been seeing you very busily plugging away at over the last few months. And I just want to put it in perspective for people before we start. Back when we first opened, a lot of attention, a lot of energy was given to, obviously, the restoration and renovation of our gorgeous building, and then, of course, opening our doors and selling tickets to our grand opening and that grand opening season And I will never forget when we got our first electric bill, and it was something like $24,000 for a month. And I remember that just being a very sobering moment when, ooh, okay, well, we've got the building open, we've got a great lineup, but it costs a lot of money to run and maintain the building, and that's where you really come in. Yeah, well, it's one thing when buildings open, they're new, but you have to remember that like anything else, they get old. Right. And if they're not taken care of, they get old, and they get more expensive to operate. Right. Uh, so the theater, I've only been there two months, but I can see a, a historical commitment to being a, a green building and operating more effectively and efficiently. Uh, the greatest example to me is the theater's in partnership to uh, generate solar energy. And because they generate that, they get electric credits that go towards their electric costs, which helps reduce it. The other thing is the, we just completed a lighting project. And uh, that I can't take credit for that because that started before I was here uh, by Ted Hansen. Well, Ted Hudson, and let me just Ted say, Hudson, sorry. even <laughs> though even though you might not be able to take full credit, you've mm-hmm. implemented it. And this is where I have to say, I was one of the people who was resistant to changing all of the lights from what's the right terminology. Well, they're less energy efficient bulbs. Some are actually incandescent, which is the dark ages of uh, lighting. Now. Right, but we are a historical building. So there are some places where the light, there's no arguing that the light is definitely different between mm-hmm. the incandescent bulbs and fluorescent right. bulbs, right? right? And so I'm one of those people, and for people listening, our offices, our administrative offices, are in the basement of our building. So we don't have a lot, a lot of natural sunlight. So, you know, we, we get outside during the day, make sure we get our fill of vitamin D. But that means we need to fully light our work areas. I don't know about a lot of people that are listening, but I tend to get migraines with the glare of that fluorescent lighting. So in our creative suite, people used to joke because they'd come in and it would seem pretty dim in our office because we were really using area lights to light Mm -hmm. our work areas. And Lewis, I have to say, you saved the day. Well, it's one issue with lighting. I mean, people are always, first of all, people are afraid of change. It's easy not to change. Uh, The second thing is that you have to realize that modern lighting, besides being more cost-effective, it's also better quality lighting. Mm -hmm. It's a technology that's constantly improving. Uh, And in your area, you have to be conscious of things like glare on your screens. Right. Which can give you headaches. So your solution of using lamps is something that I would probably do and everybody else. As far as the theater itself, when this project was done and carried out, we had to look at the issue of the historical aesthetics Mm -hmm. of the theater. Uh, You know, in a couple of areas, we put sample bulbs in and looked at them, and we decided we weren't going to do it because it took too much away from the historical character of the lighting. But where we could do it, we did it, and it's a great benefit to the uh, theater, not only in terms of saving a lot of money. It's saving 27% of our lighting load, but it's also creating situations where you have better lighting. Absolutely. As as your example is. Absolutely. And so this is significant, 27% savings, and that was already after we had saved from moving to, what, 80% solar energy for our Mm -hmm. electricity? Yeah. And so you're really carrying that whole movement forward, so you still deserve, in my mind, a lot of credit for making it happen and in a pleasant way, and in a way that people can embrace, especially with office lighting. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'll take a little bit of credit, but not much for this. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the other? Now, I think that we also need to spend a little bit of time on the brass because we've been open for six years now, right? right. Well, almost six years. It'll be six years in in March. And if you come to our gorgeous theater, you'll see beautiful brass everywhere, right? Yes, yes now you will. <laughs> yeah. And so... 
you know, if any of you have brass in your homes, you know that it requires cleaning and polishing. Mm -hmm. How many man hours has it taken over the summer I, I to have, clean our brass? I have no idea, but I dream about it still. <laughs> But one issue is this is going back to the issue of you can have a new building, but if you don't take care of it and maintain it, it's going to get old quickly. And in a situation with the brass, I think people have actually gotten used to seeing it in that condition. But because I was from outside, it looked ugly to me. So you know, we started <laughs> doing it, and we got some help from a volunteer, Brian Anderson. You know, it's been a, a big help. He has 40 years of experience in metal refinishing. Wow. So we've learned a lot of methods of how to do it from him, which has helped to lessen our labor time in labor efforts and uh, you know we appreciate what he's doing it's a good idea of you know it's a good example of a contribution from the community to the theater absolutely yeah. and yet another way that people are able to use their time talent and resources to really make a difference right and, and we're all happy with it. We're tired of it, but we're happy with it. Right. Well, I laugh because, and you were even saying, we have a pretty big building, right? How many square feet are we talking about? Oh, we're not talking that many square feet. It's like 50,000 or less. <laughs> but the issue, the issue, well, I'm used to bigger buildings. The, the issue is the amount of traffic that comes into the building. You know, all your theater goers, plus all the special events and functions you have, and then your normal uh, traffic of people in and out of the building. I mean, it's over 200,000 people. Right, and that's for the ticket buyers. Then you add in the high school graduations and the college graduations, right. the special events, the meetings. That's a lot of people touching the brass. Yes, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people touching everything, <laughs> and I and I also have to say that when you get our new season guide, you'll see there's a picture of a grandchild sitting on her grandmother's lap, touching the brass. I didn't mean it, everybody. I didn't mean it. Don't let your grandchildren <laughs> touch the the, bra the brass. Okay, I already got spoken to by our facilities yeah. people. Don't touch yeah. the brass. Well, the brass <laughs> people are going to touch it. We realize this, but we've actually taken it from being hopeless, and by refurbishing it making it a maintenance problem that we can deal with over time. So what is you know, that process for refurbishing brass? Because that is such well, a you have to When it's this old, you have to clean it mm -hmm. and use certain solutions to do that, mm -hmm. certain chemical uh, pastes. And then you have to uh, put polish on it. And <laughs> then you also have to buff it. Yeah. And then you have to seal it. If you seal it with uh, uh, some type of sealer, some acrylic sealer, it'll keep it for you. It'll keep it in the situation where you just have to clean it periodically, and you'll keep it from oxidizing. Because brass is a metal; people touch it, you have acid on your hand. There's a chemical reaction that's what causes it to tarnish over time. Yep. So th that's the process, basically. It sounds simple, but it's not that simple. So when you have a lot of it, it's not simple. <laughs> so we're cleaned, polished, and sealed. Uh, we have about fifteen percent or so sealed. That's Sealing's the tough part. I bet. That's something Brian has to do because he has a professional skill and we don't. Yep. Uh, well, and you were also talking about the amazing commitment of the people on our staff that are on our facilities yeah. team. Because what were you saying? Well, basically, when, when the theater opened, I mean, until I got there, there's only two people on the whole maintenance staff. And, and the work that gets done is because of their dedication and hard work. And they're great people. And with great people, you can solve any problem. That's right. You know, it may take us a little bit of time and a little bit of a learning process on some things, but we're still going to be able to do it. So big shout out to Dan and Stan on our oh. facilities. And Danielle, too. And Danielle, too. <laughs> Jeez. Yep. Dan, Danielle, and Stan, and right. of course, Lewis, we appreciate all that you do to make us sparkle and shine at the Hanover Theater. Without you, we would look dreary and dull. So well, thank you. Well, thank you, Lisa. And, uh, you know, it's a great place for all of us, and we all work together. Yes, and if yeah. you're interested in more about our sustainable and green initiatives and efforts, we do post press releases on our website. You can tune in and listen to Lewis talk about this on our blog. And that web address is thehanovertheater.org. So thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you at the theater, and have a great day.